These guys are taking fishing nets to a whole other level. They're capturing the cloud so that the villagers can have fresh water that is fished straight out of the clouds of southwest Morocco. This is the adventure of the Meridian Expedition. Assigned a four-year Meridian patrol, the bold team explores the intelligence of exciting worlds, uncharted research, and exotic knowledge. These are its voyages and its adventures. Even though the road to Agadir was long, we were still eager to learn all about Darsi Ahmed and ways of capturing the cloud. It was the president of the association who helped us learn more about the invention. Je m'appelle Aïssa Derem, je suis le président de l'association Darsi Ahmed pour l'éducation, le développement et la culture. Et nous avons développé un projet de collecte d'eau de brouillard. Ce, ce prototype qu'on appelle les cloud fisher. Avec ce nouveau système, on arrive à, à des moyennes de 13, euh, 13, 14 litres par mètre carré euh, par jour. Et parce qu'aussi, il faut dire que la région où nous sommes, elle est très favorable à, à, au brouillard. Et qui, par exemple, résiste à à des vitesses de 120 km h comme dans, dans ces montagnes là où il y a beaucoup de vent. En plus, le, ils, ils, ils sont aussi faits de telle sorte qu'ils sont protégés derrière. Ça ne fait pas, quand il y a du vent, ça ne fait pas des ventres. Et à ce moment, l'eau tomberait à l'extérieur. Ils sont très résistants et ils sont très dimensionnels. Seeing the magnificent fog can change one's life. We we'll learned that after speaking with the director of the association. My name is Jamila Bargash and I am the director of the organization uh, Dar Sihmet for Development, Education and Culture. I personally have a source of uh, fascination and uh, love story with fog. The communities actually call me the uh, uh, fiancé of uh, fog. Uh, I saw fog coming in. Uh, swelling and rising and coming up in the mountain. I was at a high elevation and uh, witnessing this fog event was a beautiful moment of connection with the earth, with the connection with the past of the earth and the millennia that it has taken to actually come to be alive. And it has really uplifted me and it has taught me a lesson and I have felt really one with fog and since that day I've decided right then and then to actually quit my university job and uh, give all my time to the organization that we, we founded a year later and make it into an organization that deals with environmental education and also with thinking about fog as a way of uh, treating and thinking through alternative venues for water as water is becoming scattered and scattered around the planet. Setting up these nets is not as easy as it may sound, since the local population had a great lot of prejudice against the fog. Uh, a phenomenon that brings um, destruction in some ways. It, it, it rusts material, it uh, uh, protects wolves uh, if they come for the livestock, um, it causes diseases, it, skin disease mostly, cough and humidity in the air. And also spiritually there is a little fear about what people cannot see, things that are opaque, that are not clear uh, in a region where you know, your visual cues are very important in a mountainous region. So it took us a lot of time and a lot of training and talking to kind of shift this paradigm of thinking about fog as a negative natural phenomenon into having it accepted and celebrated as a absolute source for water. 
Such an initiative gives way to establishing various social programs within development, education and culture. Our Ethnographic Field School is our big project besides the FOG project and every year we host several academic groups from American and European universities for programs that last anywhere from a week to several weeks who um, the goal is just to really learn about Morocco in a way that goes beyond uh, a typical tourism encounter so students take intensive dirija, they visit a lot of different programs, a lot of different sites, um, they stay with host families, they do excursions. Uh, usually the theme is development and sustainability, but we also do programs on Moroccan history, women's rights, uh, the role of NGOs, a whole range of topics. We were glad to learn that the Cloudfisher supplies 16 villages with potable water every day. And we're very happy to say that uh, today we have about a thousand people drinking fog water, uh, plus their livestock. Uh, amazing experience that has absolutely profoundly transformed the lives of individuals and communities and opened new vistas for research and thinking about the future of water scarcity in a region where water, uh, underground water is becoming scattered and where uh, rainfall also is becoming uh, scattered, scattered and scattered with extremely low rainfall every year. Sometimes the solution to a problem is not far away. It could be even floating in the fog, waiting for it to be harvested. What about you? Are you also doing something meaningful?